In a time before time when divine beings and humans coexisted, a story untold unfurls in Genesis chapter 6. This ancient narrative opens with an unusual event, an occurrence shrouded in mystery and intrigue. As the curtain lifts, we are introduced to the sons of God, divine entities of celestial origin as they gaze upon the daughters of men, earthly women of stunning beauty. This is no ordinary tale. It's a chronicle that challenges our understanding of the divine and the mortal, the spiritual and the corporeal. The sons of God, drawn by the allure of the daughters of men, descend from their heavenly abode. They choose wives from among them, blurring the lines that separate the divine from the mortal. This mingling of the celestial and the terrestrial, the divine and the mortal, is a pivotal moment in this saga, and so the divine and the mortal intermingled, giving rise to a new era of beings. Born of divine and human blood were the Nephilim, mighty heroes of old, men of renown. This is where our tale takes an intriguing turn as we delve into the story of these formidable beings. These were not just your everyday heroes, they were the Nephilim, a breed apart, the offspring of the sons of God and the daughters of men. They were powerful, they were feared, and their very existence became a stuff of legend. The Nephilim, from the Hebrew word Nephil, meaning to fall, were indeed a paradox. They were the fallen ones, yet they stood tall, their stature matching their immense power. Their presence was awe-inspiring, yet terrifying. Their might a cause for both admiration and fear. They were heroes in the eyes of some, yet villains in the eyes of others. But who were these Nephilim, really? Were they the heroes of old men of renown? As some believe, their strength and valor were undeniable. Their feats were the stuff of legend, their courage the benchmark for heroes to come. They were extraordinary, they were strong, they were the mighty heroes of old. Yet there's another side to this coin. Some interpretations paint the Nephilim as villains. Their power, rather than being a source of inspiration, was a cause for fear. Their deeds, rather than being heroic, were seen as destructive. Their existence, rather than being a testament to divine human union, was viewed as an aberration, a violation of the natural order. So were the Nephilim heroes or villains? The answer, perhaps, lies in the eye of the beholder. They were both. They were neither. They were a testament to a time when the lines between the divine and the human were blurred, when gods walked the earth and when men reached for the heavens. In their might and glory they stood tall, their very existence a testament to a time when the divine walked the earth. The Nephilim, mighty heroes of old or fearsome villains, remain one of the most fascinating aspects of Genesis chapter 6. Yet even as these powerful beings roamed the earth, God looked upon his creation with regret. The earth had become a place of corruption and wickedness, a far cry from the paradise God had envisaged. He regretted creating humanity, which had strayed so far from its original purpose. The divine heart ached at the sight of such rampant disregard for love and justice. In response to the moral decay, God contemplated a radical solution. He decided to wipe the slate clean to erase the errors of humanity with a great flood. This was not a decision taken lightly, but out of a profound longing for a world where righteousness could prevail over corruption. Yet amidst the chaos, there was one man who found favor in God's eyes. Noah, a righteous man, blameless among the people of his time, walked faithfully with God. He was a beacon of light in a world consumed by darkness. God presented Noah with a daunting task, a mission to build an ark that would save him, his family, and a pair of every kind of living creature from the impending catastrophe. This plan was God's way of offering a new beginning, a chance for humanity to start afresh, free from the shackles of their past transgressions. With a heavy heart, God set forth a plan to cleanse the earth, sparing only Noah and his family from the impending deluge. Genesis chapter 6 paints a captivating picture of a world long gone, but what can we glean from it today? It implores us to consider the repercussions of unchecked power and the mercy shown by God in preserving Noah. Amid the destruction, there's an undercurrent of hope for a fresh start. These tales, though ancient, hold lessons that are timeless, urging us to reflect and learn. As we delve deeper into this ancient text, we find that its messages still resonate, offering us wisdom for our own times.